cradle of life and love. It's like the family, a nursery bed, where we can learn to live fully and abundantly our life as brothers and sisters, as husband and wife, as friends. The family where we learn how to forgive. The family where we learn how to live life to the full. Dear friends, we have had the readings of today and what came to my mind is this. If we are here and we are who we are, first of all, it's because of our mothers and our fathers. It's them who out of love came together and brought out that beautiful gift that is before me, mom and dad. Thank you very much for bringing us to life. Because without you, we couldn't be here. Yes, I know that maybe mom could have done better, dad could have done better. That usually happens like any other mother, like any other father, wishes the best for the children. They plan to do good, but sometimes they do their best with what they have. They can't do their best with what they don't have. Sometimes with the little resources, they give their best. With the little life they have, they give their best. Sometimes they also make mistakes. They make mistakes in their living together because they are also learning together on how to love each other. Sometimes, unfortunately, even many things happen in between that may even separate them for whatever reason. This moment, dear friends, as we gather here this evening, let's gather with a heart that is full of gratitude. A heart full of gratitude, first of all, for our parents, for our mothers and fathers, for what they have been to us. Because with whatever they had and whatever they are, they did the best to make us who we are. They would have done more, yeah, but I'm sorry, we are all not on the same. People struggle, others are okay. Others they find things, others don't find things immediately. But just know one thing, that a good mother, I know a good number of you are mothers here, a good mother, even when he doesn't have anything, will give whatever he has to make sure that the son and the daughter really feels happy. They sacrifice, they go through everything. Already, the fact that you are here, far away from our families, including myself, is already a sacrifice that you are making. Any sacrifices will be blessed by the Lord. Let's not give up to sacrifice and to give life. Father, mother, wherever they are, if they have passed on, we pray that the Lord may receive their souls in eternal peace. If they are still alive, let's continue making the best use of their presence, even through the means of communication, because we need really to stop a bit and thank them for whatever they have done now. They, we were in the middle of everything and they were there for us. Now, they, as the years go by, are in need of our presence and we need to show them that we are there for them as well. And that's a grateful heart that acknowledges that if I am who I am, it's because of the many people, and among the many people is the parents that have taken care of us. We've had, really from the readings here, that in the family, as God created, He created everything, and everything was good. Everything was good. And when He created the, the man in His own image and likeness, He realized something was missing. And that's why he created the woman. Meaning that as we read from the book of Genesis chapter 2 verses 18 to 24, the Lord said, it's not good for the man to be alone. Dear friends, in life, a life when we live it alone is a boring life, is a painful life, is a life that breaks us down, is a life that will put us in crisis, is a life that will really crush us to the ground. And right from this text, the beginning page, we hear, it's not good for a man to be alone. We need each other, first of all, as humans, as brothers and sisters, as friends, we need each other. The question would be, how am I there for my brother, my sister, even those who are stubborn to me, even those who don't wish me well? Am I there as a father, as a mother, as a brother, as a sister? Am I there for the other? We have to ask ourselves, how much more every day as I wake up in the morning, I say, today I will make it an effort to be more of a friend, more of a brother, more of a, more of a sister, more of a mother, 
who has a big heart, more of a father who provides and cares and caters for and protects those people around me. If we wake up every day and we want to look at life in a positive way, then whatever challenges that may come in life, which are there, especially today in this time of war and tension, this time, we overcome it together because we are together as brothers and sisters. It is not good for a man to be alone. There are people who think that life is moving the life alone. I will handle it my way. My brother, my sister, our strength is limited. Let us not pretend at all to think that in the life we can go through it alone. No, we need each other. We need each other. First of all, from the families, from the communities over here, we need each other. Life becomes heavy if we move alone. It becomes beautiful and light if we move it together. We can even go further. We can even develop each other. We learn from each other. We build each other when we open our hearts to embrace others as they are. And when we open our hearts to do good to the others and to see the good in the others. Because there's a lot of good in those people around us. There's a lot of good. We just pray that God helps us open our eyes to see the good in our brothers and sisters. And we know that not to use our energy to look at it. Um, only what is not going on. Of course in life there will be also something that is not going on. It will be there. In this life, as long as we are here, there will be moments where things, some things are not going on. But we are invited to look at the positive side of life, to look at what is beautiful and good, and to move with that. It's not good to be alone. So let's continue building our houses, our, our lives together. And we hear this first reading concluding and saying, that's why a man leaves his father and mother, a man leaving his father and mother, and clings to a woman, his wife. And the two of them become one flesh. Dear yeah, friends, on this point, today it's a very delicate point. It's a very challenging point. But one thing which is clear here is the Lord invites us to examine our conscience, which is about man and woman. It's not about man and man or woman and woman with all respect. Because if our fathers and mothers were to think like man and man, we wouldn't be here. If they were to think as woman and woman, we wouldn't be here. And one of the things to share blessings, especially for those who are married, is to get married as husband and wife, to promote the children, to give life to others, so that life does not end with us. Let the life continue as it is with the husband and the wife. And the beautiful thing here, which we have heard here, is the two become one flesh. Remember that, that the, the, the Lord made, brought out a small part on the ribs of the man, and that's what together made that oneness of the woman. Meaning, it's not about the man dominating, but it's just a man and a woman, husband and wife, walking together, bringing life together, showing love to each other, giving life to each other. Let the life not end with you and me because we are man and man and woman and woman. I know it's a challenge. That's why we have, as soon as possible, to stop it a bit, including myself, everyone, to stop a bit and say, but how am I living my life? How am I living my life? If the Lord calls me today, am I at peace with my life? It doesn't matter whether I would have made some mistakes in the past. What's important right now is to stop and examine and see, am I really living as one husband and wife? Or am I living my life if, for whatever reason in the past that maybe something didn't work out well? Am I saying that from today onwards I want to put order in my life? I want really to give meaning to my life to do good to myself, to do good to those around me. It's never too late. Our God is a Father who welcomes us as we are and is patient with us. It's just enough that I ask myself, am I living my life very well, as it should be, male and female? I should ask myself, and for those who are planning to get married, my brothers, my sisters, here we have a chance. Many times we simplify things in this. We have the big couple of migrants here in Israel, as, as in the, in Israel and Palestine, we and the, and the whole Holy Land, we try the best we can, dear friends, to see that we simplify things for you. It's just enough to say, uh, next month I want to get married and to be the joy of the centuries community. And to say, yes, we are all putting our hands together to see that we get married so that we promote life and life to the full. 
dear friends, the two become one. And this is what we are invited to be, that we have one mind, one heart, one soul, one life. Not because, not because, uh, well, because uh, the, the, everyone has to think like me, or everyone has to do things like me. It's not that we are different, but the issue is we have to be one. One person, and that's our strength. That's what we, the unity, the community that this community of St. Teresa and Real about. Our oneness is our strength. Let's continue building that oneness in our families, our oneness in our communities, our oneness in life, so that we are not scattered. Because today, unfortunately, sin scatters us. When you hear the word diabolo or diabolo or sin, you know, it's, uh, something to do with sin, it's something which divides. And divides and makes us unhappy. And sometimes we think we are happy. So that's why we have to pray for that gift of oneness, of unity, that makes us whole, body, mind, heart, and soul. So that when we journey with life in this remaining phase of life, some maybe have other 10 years to live. Some of us maybe have another 100 years to live. Uh, whatever years that we have, the question is, how am I moving on in life? What Socrates, what great thing has said, uh, that an unreflected life is not worth living. So we have time reaches in our lives, we have to stop and say, how am I taking my life? Is it helping me to be in good peace, in good relationship with God, to be in good peace and relationship with others, to be in good peace and relationship as one with God, with one with others, and one with myself? How am I living my life? And finally, we hear, of course, this episode from our Lord Jesus Christ, and when it talks about divorce, it's, there's nothing about divorce that is uh, encouraged as such because once married, all are married. The Lord brings back that from the original plan, God wanted husband and wife, woman and man. And from that moment, a man leaves the father and mother and become, the two become one. And there's nothing like a divorce. Challenges will be there in the families. Very easy. They will be there. But how would we face them? Sometimes these are the cause of divorce. If Moses permitted, remember this is like a, a law that somebody can put up, a law that somebody can put up, but that law can be a bad law. can be a law to, be, to protect someone, but in, like in this case, Moses put up this law of divorce because the women at that time were mistreated. Because if he was found without a divorce letter, that is having another person who is taken now seriously as a husband, she was stoned, she was killed according to the law which was there. So in that case, the law was not really protecting the persons around. And that is why they talk about, Jesus talks about the divorce letter, so that the woman is free now to settle down, finally, with someone whom we can call husband and wife. So let us pray, dear friends, in this, uh, uh, this uh, Eucharist, that we may imitate the little children like the ones we saw here, uh, that we don't chase them away. This is what Jesus said. As they were bringing the little children, uh, the disciples were chasing them away. Remember, the family is composed of father and mother, children, so the children were part of it. Thank you for bringing them here. Yeah, that, we don't, we, that our life is like a, that of a child that trusts in the father. May we pray that the Lord can help us to trust in the father in every situation of our lives. That our life is like a child who is spontaneous, simple, he smiles, a child who is also defenseless but who trusts in the Lord. Let's pray that we may welcome the child, the childlike people around us, those who are defenseless. And even among us here, there are those who are fragile, who are struggling with life. Let us welcome them as they are. It's the duty of every Christian, you and me, to open our eyes to see those who are struggling in life. Today, people struggle with life in many ways. The good thing about our Catholic Church, we do not condemn anyone. We just speak what the Lord invites us and we leave people to reflect together and see the best that can come out. And the Lord never gets tired of welcoming us. That's why he embraced the children and he invites us to embrace each other's brothers and sisters. He touched them and blessed them, meaning he wished the best. To bless means to speak well of others and to do good to others. And let us pray that we may, in whatever we say, whatever we do, we may always say and do for the good of others. And may, you always be, may we always be one. And may we never get tired also of evaluating ourselves every day, examining our conscience on how we are living our lives. We pray that the Lord may bless us, 
Boris, because as a father, he loves us so much. He cares for us so much. He's patient with us so much and wishes us to be really happy, not only in this world, but also in the world to come. Amen. Amen.